Okay, my friends, something that's just not understood is rare earth metals and rare earth elements. Even the, the people that are looking for them really don't understand them. They, they understand what they see, but they don't understand the origin of what they see. Let me point this out to you, and then I'll tell you, they, they are everywhere and they are very easy to harvest. This is not, then they're making a big thing out of this because they don't understand mud fossils. Okay, my friends, I've been holding on to this for a while, but the, the Indian Mineral Development Act of 1982 gives the Native Americans complete control over their mineral resources. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling okay about showing this. At first, I, I you know, um, exploitation, I worry about that. But, you know, and some of this stuff is on sacred lands, and that's understandable. They, they, these people are very, very ethical people and they're not going to disturb their sacred lands so that may be an issue I, I don't know all i'm doing is pointing out what is there and i need to show these things because they they um support my elect uh, my um, mud fossil theory so i'm going to show it and i hope it doesn't disrupt anything because that would upset me and i and i, I don't want to upset anybody or cause any oh boy <laughs> I'm just gonna show it to you you see that right there these are manganese concretions and I know what they are these are from living creatures and those are what's called interstitium I discovered this nobody understands what these are right now they see them, these little balls they say Ooh, look at these are concretions they all gather in areas well no they gather under the skin to make the skin return and when you stretch it this way and that way it comes back to where these balls are anchored I discovered this in mud fossils 10 years ago almost okay my friends everything nowadays runs on rare earth elements magnets and so forth that are critical for all the new electronic devices. Now there's this is where they're getting them from, these concretions. And they're loaded with manganese and different metals and so forth. Now, listen to this. Andrea Koshinsky from the Institute of Geochemistry investigates rare earth deposits in the Pacific Ocean. She's particularly interested in these strange nodules, which are full of useful raw materials. There's a demand for raw materials, and there are deposits on land, but many natural deposits are in remote, sensitive ecosystems. In the rainforest, for example, or in coastal areas, or their mud... All right. What they are is mud fossils, and they are the tendon balls of the mud fossils. They call them manganese concretions. Well, I'll show you something. Oh, you see that? That's interstitium. <laughs> These balls are the interstitium balls from some gigantic creature that had flesh and skin. And these were the balls that anchored the skin so it could gush around and come back. That is the eroded flesh. These are what they call moki marbles. You see that? That's interstitium. These are the interstitium balls that are the moki marbles. And this is eroded flesh. And they come gigantic. These balls come gigantic, huge, like the size of houses almost. I'm going to show you an area that has a ton of these laying all over the place. And they're loaded with these, these um, rare earth minerals. <laughs> they're everywhere. You see that? I'm not going to tell you where it is. These are those concretion balls they're looking for. Absolutely enormous, all over the earth. They have no clue. If they went and grabbed one of those and, and analyzed it, they're going to find exactly what I'm talking about. You see right here? Moki marble concretions. The term moki marble refers to spherical, round, subspherical ironstone concretion weathered from cross bedded quartz sandstone of the lower Navajo sandstone formation. Uppermost Triassic, lowermost Jurassic. Ironstone concretions are ubiquitous. They're everywhere in a Navajo sandstone and in subjacent and subjacent strategic units from several localities throughout the southern Utah, USA. That is interstitial. They range in size from millimeters to tens of meters. That's 30 meters or 30 feet or more. 
they vary from spherical shape to tower shape to complexity irregular shapes. These mo 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 moky marble concretions are principally mixtures of iron oxide, hematite, and manganese oxides. That's exactly what they want for. That's what they're looking for. The dark brown surface extends not too far into the concretions. Broken samples show pale orangish brown quartz sandstone inside. Now, these have a surface layer of manganese, it sounds like to me. Some of these, these tendon balls have more concretion. You know, it depends. They should take, if they're ubiquitous, they're everywhere. I can imagine some of the uh, Native Americans would use a little extra cash. If they got them just laying around, I mean, if they're not destroying anything by getting them, what the heck?